Hello, good evening. Today's lecture is called The Infinity, The Infinity of God Almighty. Kabbalah and Chassidus Explained, number nine. Welcome everyone, thank you for coming. And welcome all of you watching online, many hundreds of people watching online. It's been an amazing journey. We used to have well, five people for class, 10, 15 people, it was amazing. Uh, here we have hundreds and hundreds of people watching, so this is really great. I'm specifically excited tonight <clears throat> because we are getting to the real stuff, so to speak, although everything up until now <laughs> was real, but it was introductions relative to what we're going to teach tonight. Uh, we are at the Young Isla of Brighton Beach, and this class is sponsored by Chabad of Kingsboro. Baruch Hashem, uh, I've been heading these two organizations for about 20 years. So, we'll start with the Rambam. In his 13 principles of faith, the third principle <coughs> is as follows. I believe with perfect faith that God does not have a body. Physical concepts do not apply to him. There is nothing whatsoever that resembles him at all. Commentary on Mishnah, which is really where the Rambam wrote the, the principles, certain principles. The third principle is that God is totally non-physical. We believe that his, this unity, which we call God, is not a body nor a physical force. Nothing associated with the physical can apply to him in any way. We thus cannot say that God moves, rests, exists in a given place, in a physical place. Things such as this, I, I, I added that word physical, again, we, we thus cannot say that God moves, rests, or exists in a given place. Things such as this can neither happen to him nor be part of his intrinsic nature. Right? So basically the Rambam is saying that the third principle is that God Almighty is not physical. Not a body, not a physical being. Therefore, anything that we say about the physical cannot apply to him. And then he continues, in many uh, we're skipping a little bit, but then in many places, however, our holy scriptures, the Torah, the Tanakh, do speak of God in physical terms. Thus we find such concepts as walking, standing, sitting, speaking, speaking all the time, right? Used in relation to God. In all these cases, though, scripture is only speaking metaphorically. Our sages teach us in Baruchas 31b, the Torah speaks in the language of man. Dibra teira keloshen b'nei adam. The Torah teaches us this third principle when it says in Devarim, Deuteronomy 4.15, you have not seen any, mid, uh, any image. You have not seen any image. You cannot conceive of God as having any image or form. This is because he is not a physical being or force, as discussed earlier. It is clearly, th this is up until now is in, in Hagdabal Pirisha Mishnais. And now the Rambam in his Code of Jewish Law, Foundations of the Torah, Yusei De Hatera, 1 8, Chapter 1, Halacha 8. It is clearly expressed in both the Torah and in the Prophets that God has neither a body nor any physical attributes. It is thus written, the Lord your God is God in the heavens above and on the earth beneath. A physical body, however, cannot be in two places at the same time. One nine. Once we know this is to be true, we might find it difficult to understand uh, many passages in the Torah. We thus find such, ex such expressions as Exodus 24.10, beneath his feet, 31.18, written with God's finger, the eyes of God, the ears of God, 
all these expressions are actually adaptations to human intellect, which can only think in terms of the physical. The Torah that speaks in the language of man. They are all metaphors. Okay, so we pretty much made the point clear that Hashem God Almighty is not physical at all. Has nothing. Anything physical is limited. And God definitely is not limited. And also we find from these various verses, Kileris and Kaltmuna, you haven't seen any image, that, uh, that God is not and nothing physical. It's not he says some large, big thing, some large, big person. No. It has nothing to do with the physical. So what Only it's his crea- the, the creator of the physical, that's it. That's a good question. So, so, so you ask, what means God made man in, in his image? I believe the answer to this is um, let's say, uh, again, I'm not sure, but I think the answer to this is um, the ten sefirot which God um, creates the world with, which we're going to discuss in many classes later, man also has ten, these ten attributes. Mm-hmm. Or, um, perhaps, it also could mean uh, that God is totally free. He has free choice. He can do whatever he wants. Man has that free choice regarding good and evil. An animal that has an instinct. The animal cannot change its nature. A human being can. So a human being has free choice. It says the special of B'nai Yisrael. And, and God also. So these might be two answers, but it definitely does not mean a physical image. This is pretty much... Uh, Basic, pretty much elementary, that um, anything physical must be limited. It cannot be something unlimited physical energy, uh, unlimited physical uh, being. So, therefore, logic dictates that God cannot be physical. Because Hashem, God Almighty, is not is not is not limited; is infinite. And also, we find these various verses which the Ramah just brought that we see that God Almighty is not physical. So that's we'll say one step of infinity. He's not. He's if he would be physical, he would be finite. Because physical must be finite, must be limited. Okay, so that's one thing out of the way. The Maral Miprag, great rabbi, we'll talk about him shortly in a minute. He go, he says, he writes, and uh, Mr. Shem, next week we're going to learn from Chassidus also on this wave line, that, and that's, that, this is the accepted, uh, this, this is pretty much as the Maral writes this, but uh, this, is, this is the reality. that Hashem is not limited in spiritual limitation as well. There's a certain concept of a spiritual limit, a spiritual finite being. And God Almighty is not that either. Eventually, we're going to learn. The Alter Rebbe explains in Lekut Teira Bir Leisashbis. Sefach Tzedek explains that Rechem Tzesecha Hamonos Alakus Perek Dal Madura Kama. That the Rambam also agrees to this. But this is a whole other lecture. We're going to talk about this. Blina Der, with Hashem's help, many lectures down. So the Maral is very, very strong about this. Before we go uh, talking about what he what he holds, 
let's tell you a little bit about who he is. Baral was Rabbi Yehuda ben Betzala Loi. He was born around the year 5285, which is 494 years ago, probably in Posen, Posen. You know, there's a lot of Jewish last names, Posner, Posner. It's from that. They're probably, they were living there. <coughs> he was famous as a great Talmudic scholar at an early age. He was the spiritual head of the Jewish community in Prague, which is then the main center of Central European Jewry. The Maharal won the admiration of his great contemporaries, Rabbi Shlomo Luria, the Marshal, Rabbi Meir of Lublin, the Maharam, and others. The first two were a great uh, commentary on, on the Talmud, printed almost in each Talmud. They called him affectionately the iron pillar supporting Israel, our breath of life, and the marvel of the age. The Maharal Miprag was also a great Kabbalist. He also wrote many books on Machshav Yisrael and Jewish philosophy, Jewish thought. This is one of them, Gores Hashem, which are important books till today. Actually, in the title page of Tanya, the Shabbat of Tanya, the Alter Rebbe, the first Rebbe of Chabad, the founder of Chabad, writes in his monumental book Tanya in the beginning, in, in, in the title page, that, that, he, that he took his ideas from books, and we have a tradition, Chassidim have a tradition that the books that he means here is the Shalom and the Maharal. It's also quite fascinating that the uh, Alter Rebbe was a grandson of the Maharal, seven generations. This is uh, recorded in, in the Introduction to Hayyam Yom. The Maram of Prague was from the Geinim, which came from King David, David Amalek, David Manishai. His son was Rabbi Tzal, his son was Rabbi Shmuel, his son was Rabbi Yudaleib, his son was Rabbi Rab Meisha, his son was Rabbi Shnei Zalman, Rabbi Baruch, and the Alter Rebbe, uh, the Alter Rebbe. So it's seven generations, son after son, Ben Achar Ben for the Maral. So let me first explain you by heart, on the outside, what the Maharal writes, and then we're gonna go a little bit on the inside. But this is, uh, Chassidus is, 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 is Kabbalah, and Chassidus is very much with this, that this is, must be so. This is the way it is. This is the true way of, of, of understanding God, of what, whatever a human being is able to understand. This is the, the right faith of Jewish faith about Hashem. So, so as we said, this is also brought down in Lukot Tera, Bir Leisashbis, and Derech Zesecha Amonis Alkus. So the, the Kabbalists call Hashem, God Almighty, they call him with the two words, Ein Sof. This is prevalent, pretty much. This is the name, <laughs> the name of God, so to speak. It's not one of the real, it's not one of the seven names, but it's one of the, it's the way they call God Almighty is the infinite one, the Ein Sof, the endless one. So, step one is from what the Rambam says, that he's not a body, he's not physical, because something physical cannot be Ein Sof, cannot be unlimited. The definition of physical is limited in a certain space. So that's obviously out. So we, 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 we dealt with that. God is definitely not physical. But the truth is that the, there are spiritual beings, spiritual definitions that can also be limited. A spiritual limitation. And this is where it gets really juicy. This is where it gets quite fascinating, in my opinion. Um, so let's try to understand what is something spiritual. 
So let's say there's definitely a difference when a person says, it's interesting actually that our sages tell us, Ein asher el abadas, ein oni el abadas. Rich and poor is in, is in the mind, is with knowledge. A person that's very knowledgeable is rich. A person that knows very little is poor. Okay? But then there's obviously rich and poor as we understand it physically. More money or less money. So let's say we're saying I have a lot of money in my pocket. Or I have a lot of knowledge in my brain. Yeah? So obviously if I need, if I have a lot, a lot of dollars, I need a big pocket. So I have the pocket being full, I need a second pocket. It's a physical thing. It's very simple. But knowledge is not some, it's knowledge on one hand is something that I did not have yesterday, I learned it today, and it was added to my, to my mind. It was added to my intellect. It was added to who I am. It was added to, to, my, to my brain. But to say it takes up, oh, that's it. I, I cannot, learn. I learned five things, ten things. Well, I'm tired, that makes sense. But it's not something that takes up space, that there's no more space for anything else. It doesn't work that way, right? Because a logical concept is a spiritual being. It's a spiritual thing. It's not physical. It doesn't take up space. So when I say I have $10 in my pocket, or when I say I have 10 new things I learned today in my mind, it's, it, on one hand, they're similar. Because yesterday I did not have it, today I have it. It is a difference. Something was added. But the money is something physical. I could feel and touch and see. But the, the concepts that I studied are spiritual, which I cannot touch and see. I cannot grasp it with the five senses. I cannot smell it. I cannot taste it. I can understand it. So there we have a little bit of an opening, a little bit of a window of what a spiritual being is, a spiritual existence. For instance, a logical concept, a logical truth is a existence. It exists. It was created by God. That's another story. Even the concepts were created by God, but that's another story. 2 plus 2 equals 4. Or any other simple logic is a truth. It's a truth here in Australia, today, tomorrow, yesterday, it doesn't matter. But it's a, it's a, but it's an, it's a spiritual existence. So could you, me could you measure how much money I have in my pocket? Yes, you could. Could you measure how much knowledge a person has? Somehow you could take a test. So knowledge is spiritual, but it's measurable. It's measurable. Some people know very little. Some people know a lot. Some people are brilliant and, know, and studied all their life and know amazing. And know a great deal. So it is something, although it's spiritual, but it could still be measured. Therefore, it's limited. Let's take, for instance, I'll give you a little preview of this eventual classes we're going to learn about the Sefirot. I'll give you a preview of Chochman Bina. Very short, because uh, again, we always try to keep this class under a half hour. I don't know if it's going to happen today, but we try. So Chochman Bina. So, in the Kabbalah, it's explained that there are ten attributes that God emanated from himself. But I don't want to talk about that. Now let's talk about how it's by a person. By a person, um, there's also ten attributes. Three of them are intellectual, seven of them are emotional. Chachma bin Adas, Chesed Gvur Tiferetz, that's a Chayid Yisrael Malchus. We're going to talk about Chachma Bina, very little, just on the surface. So Chachma Bina and Das is the, is the way a person understands something. So first, let's say you're trying to figure something out. You're studying something. It could be the Torah. It could be Lahabla, anything else. You're trying to figure out, yeah, for the purpose of everyone listening online, some, some mathematical formula. You're trying to figure this out. It doesn't work. You can't get it. It's tough. Complicated. You, you read it again. You read it again. You think. You think. You, you, you deep in your mind. Suddenly, boom! 
got it. Oh, I finally I figured it out. Right? What is that? That's Chachma. That is the, the point, what you got. The point of the whole concept. Of the whole solution of the problem. Then comes the second, the second step. Bina. Bina is taking this point, this Nikuda, this concept, and taking it apart. What did you understand? What was the problem before? How did you answer the problem? What became understood? How did you understand it before? How did you what 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 did you understand? How does it offer solutions to previous problems, etc. You're taking it apart. You're dissecting the concept into various parts and details. That's Bina. That's what it says in Chassidus. It's much more to that, but that's the on the surface. Okay? So we have two concepts. We have two levels of a person understanding something, anything. We have the level of Chachma, and we have the level of Bina. Okay? Let's take something else. Let's take the first emotion. Chesed, kindness. Hopefully everybody could relate to that. Kindness, loving kindness, giving, being, being um, benevolent. Right? Everybody could. Avram Avinu, right? After the first Jew, our grandfather was the, 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 the extremely, extremely kind, always giving, giving, giving. When he couldn't give, when there's nobody to give to, he was frustrated. That's how kind he was. Now, why am I talking about this? We're talking about the infinity of God. <laughs> so I'm trying to give you a, a, an example of three spiritual concepts, three spiritual attributes that we have. Each one is limited and defined and described in what it is. Chachma is not Bina, and Bina is not Chachma. And Chachma is definitely not Chesed, not Kindness, Kindness and Wisdom. Apples and oranges. Emotions. Right. Now, sometimes they can work together. And, and the beautiful thing is when, a person, when it all works together in harmony. But we're not discussing that now. But still, it's different elements that work together. Each element has its own description and definition. And limitation. Therefore, limitation. Right? The, the highest level of a, of a person is his first faculty, which is Chachma. It's the highest level, but it's yet limited. And this is what the Maharal is insisting, and very strong, that Hashem is not limited in none of these things. You can ask me a question, what do you mean? Open up a Chumash, you'll see Hashem, Hashem, Kil, Rachum, Vachanun, Erechapayim, God is compassionate, God is kind, Okay, we'll discuss that in many classes further. But right now, we're discussing the infinity of God. And the essence of God, of who God Almighty really is, in Chesidus, it's, it's called Atzmus Mahus, the essence of God Almighty, is not limited in anything, not in physical, and not in the spiritual. Undefinable, undescribable. He has no geder. The maral is, in, is very strong. He has no geder. He has no, what's a geder? A geder is a definition. Really, a geder is a fence. So I will say every concept has its spiritual fence. This is my property, that's your property. There's a fence in between. There's, there's a fence, so to speak, between Chachme and Bina and Chesed. They all have their definition, their description. Chachma is not chesed, chesed is not chachma. That makes it limited. So let's say you're going to say Einstein was one of the most brilliant men that ever lived, which could be true, right? But even him, his logic was limited. It's still limited, human logic. But let's say you say God Almighty his brilliance, and we say every time 
Every time we go out to the bathroom, we have a special bracha. We thank Hashem that our body works well. Our body works properly. You formed man, we bless God, you formed man, formed man with wisdom. So again, a question. You tell me God is not defined in, with, in wisdom. But how do you say that he... So that will be discussed many classes later. We have to go step by step. We're on a beautiful journey. Ladies and gentlemen, we're on a beautiful journey. Bear with me. Have patience. Everything will be Bezerat Hashem figured out. Not by me, by the holy uh, Kabbalists and sages. We just have to try to, to understand their words properly. So, if you say that Hashem is defined by wisdom, which the Maral is very adamant not to say that, Infinite wisdom. Einstein was limited, the human being. Infinite wisdom. God has infinite wisdom. True. But you cannot define him by that. Because the inf how much wisdom is there? Infinite. But the very concept of wisdom is finite. How much kindness is there? Infinite. But the very concept of kindness is a finite concept. It's a limited definition and description. Hashem is totally undescribable, undefinable. That's why the Maral writes that our holy sages called Hashem, every Jew knows, HaKadosh Baruch Hu, the Holy One, blessed be He. What's holy? Holy means separated. Separated from anything else, from anything physical and even from anything spiritual. If we give a description, a definition to God, we limit him. But he is ain't soft, he's unlimited. Totally without any limitation. Okay, I think we're ready. Understood, yeah? yeah? Now let's go a little bit in the inside of the Maharal. A few lines. I'm going to read in the Hebrew and in the English. Uh, Hebrew, I'm going to translate to English. So bear with me, we're going to do some Hebrew now. But he blessed be he, that our sages called him with the name, the Holy One, blessed be he. He's not called, called with the, the Holy, um, the Holy Wise One. Interesting, when the Alter Rebbe quotes him, he, does, he just writes, could be, could be over here, it's a printed mistake. Because the Alter Rebbe just writes over here, Vele Nikra. He's not called the, the, the wisdom. They don't call him the wise one. They call him the holy one. Why? Because his, his truth of his existence is not known. He's separated from any physical thing, from any body, from anything physical. From any creature, any existence. Therefore, he's called the holy one. Blessed be he, in Kaddish Shemaram Bishu Nivdal. Because Kaddish, holy, is said on someone which is separated, separated from any other existence. Now, this is a new lingo which we need to learn. Kihu is Baruch, you ready? Because he, the blessed one, is Poshut Betachlis Hapshitus. You find this in Kabbalah, you find this in Chsidis a lot. Maybe, maybe, I don't know if the Maral was the first one to use this, maybe not, probably not. But Poshut Betachlis Hapshitus. Woman is posh to betachas apshitus. So, <laughs> it was, I just heard something on YouTube. Someone that didn't know how to translate it. And it says, pashut in Hebrew means simple. <laughs> the simple light. <laughs> so anyway, it's quite funny. Um, but it means, it means much more than that. That's why, again, back to the previous classes, you have to learn from uh, reliable sources. You have to know how to translate these words. Poshut betachas apshitus means divested. It's a hard word to translate in English. It's barely translatable. But uh, the, this word is mentioned in Tanya, uh, chapter 51. Over there, it's translated divested. <laughs> what are they, what are they talking about? Vestments? What is, this? What, what is this, BDS? What are you talking about? So 
That's why it's not, a, it's not an exact translation. But it basically means that Hashem is not describable in any way. He's divested, he's out, he's, in Yiddish you say, Uizgiton. He does not have any type of, of garment, of description, of, of defi definition. That's what it means. But Tachlis Apshut is totally, totally undescribable, undefinable. Umizeba Atzmai. Okay, I'm going to just read this um, and then translate it in English. Explain it. Umizeba Atzmai Shu Betachlis Apshut is in the very middle of the manu. Kado Varshi. By the way, where am I reading? I'm reading in Gvuris Hashem. The, 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 Work of the, the Maral, one of his Bisparim is Gvuris Hashem in the second introduction. Quoted in, in Kodotere and in Haman in Dechus Asecha, in Haman Asakus. Omeze Bats, Meshu Betachs Abshit, the same Dover Nivdom in Menu, Kadov, or Sheshla Gedder, Ume Yuchet Bedover Ma, Bishwala is a Gedder, Nivdom in Menu Dover, She ain't a beginner. I'll be Freki, who is Barak Posh, the only Gedder Klaal, ain't over Nivdom in Menu. Since he's undescribable, undefinable, so therefore nothing is separated from him. He could create anything. From Chachma, you cannot have Bina. From Chesed, you cannot have Chachma. Chachma can give you a lot of Chachma. Bina can give you Bina. Chesed can give you Chesed. And the way he, re he that, that's where Vu Yachalakel. Since nothing is separate from him, therefore he could do anything. He's almighty. Therefore everything comes from him. If he's defined in anything, so something which is out of that definition cannot come from him. He's limiting him to something. But since he's, let's call him as the Rambam calls him in right in the beginning of his book, Amita Simatsi, the truth of existence. Since he is the truth of existence, undescribable, undefinable, not limited, not with anything physical, and not with anything spiritual, so therefore any creature could come from him, whether it's a stone or a human brain, and everything in between. Understood? Okay. So that is the Maral on this. It goes on a little bit more. It goes on and on, but you know, we're gonna it's gonna be enough for tonight. I think we're over a half hour. So I just wanted to uh, announce, I know a lot of you are gonna listen to this. Mr. Shem, a lot of you live in our area in Brooklyn, New York, or in New York in general. So the Reb is 25th yard site is coming up. The Rebbe's yard site actually is in on the 3rd of Tammuz on Shabbos. Uh, but this event will be a few days before. Um, we have this every year. It's a very nice event. Hundreds of people come. It's organized by the Lubala Truth Organization. And a lot of shluchim bring people. It's a beautiful thing. So there's going to be an event. July second, Tuesday, July second, the 29th of Sivan, 7:30 p.m. at the Ohel. Rabbi Moshe Nu from the Montreal Torah Center will talk about what the Rebbe means to us. And Councilman Chaim Deutsch, Chairman Jewish Caucus, the New York City Council, will talk what, about what the Rebbe means to the world. So everybody's invited. 7:30. That Tuesday evening, July 2nd, you can go to the oil before or after the program. I urge all of you listening to come to the event. And please, if you intend on coming, please WhatsApp me. A lot of you have uh, my WhatsApp. You get my class via WhatsApp. So please WhatsApp me that you're coming. Okay, uh, ladies and gentlemen, many hours goes into preparing these classes, inspiring hundreds, Baruch Hashem. If you're able to, please make even a small donation. Log on to ChabadKingsboro.org. 
Chabad Kingsboro, that's C H A B A D. Uh, Kingsboro, the whole word, B O R O U G H dot org. Click on donate. Thank you very much. We also have a camp coming up. A lot, of, a lot of children need, need scholarships and do other things in Kingsville College, a lot of good things. So take a look there. Thank you all for listening. I hope you learned great stuff. Please leave your comments. Stop it, stop it. <laughs> okay, please leave your comments below. Forward to your friends. Like us. So don't forget to subscribe. I hope Bli Nader to give a share next week, I hope, what the plan is on this same topic, but from the sources of the famous Hasidic classics written by the Rebbe Rashaba, the fifth Chabad Rebbe, Samach Vov and Ayin Beis, we're going to go further into this, and that will probably be the final class on, probably be the final class on uh, the essence of God Almighty and Asas and Uhus. Thank you all for listening, and may Hashem always help us and guide us to relay these holy concepts, these holy truths in the proper way. Thanks again for listening. Have a good night and all the best.